<laughs> you want to be picked up? Whee! Ooh, right. Hi, welcome. Thank you once again for joining me. My name is Magnus and this is my son Lucas. He's a year and a couple of weeks. Is that right? You celebrated your birthday a few weeks back? <laughs> he wants the camera. <laughs> the, uh, what is the topic about? The topic's about cells. Now, just as a quick reminder, we have between 50 and 100 trillion cells in our body. We've got between about 23 and 25,000 genes. Everything's connected. They're all communicating. And when you think about it, when you wake up in the morning, have you ever found that your elbow cells fall out with your knee cells? Or even perhaps your liver cells are having a, a domestic or a war with your heart cells? That's not how the body works. The body works in calm community, community, together. And it's interesting when you look outside and you, and you see the wars going on and everything else and you're thinking, that's not right. You know what it was like survival of the fittest and we're talking about Darwinian theory here. That's not really what was meant by survival of the fittest. It was a case of, <laughs> you're going to be a pleasant distraction again, aren't you? Now you're going to have hiccups. Let me see if I can put him down if he doesn't cry. And he reached for his water, that's it, and you drink from there. And what we're looking at was to do with everyone working together in a community to benefit everybody. Not a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. And we've kind of got a bit lost in our understanding of what that is. You're so lovely, aren't you? Yes. Mummy will be back soon. Now, just as a quick reminder, there only is one dis ease. The body's not at ease. I know that we have many labels, in other words, if somebody shows signs of, let's say, Alzheimer's, because their memory, their short-term memory is fading, that's because the cells are malfunctioning. We also know if you've been labelled with something, I don't know, like osteoporosis, then the cells in your bones are not really being formed correctly. In other words, they're malfunctioning. So ultimately, you're either healthy or you're not. And if you're not healthy, that means your cells are not communicating, are not working well. Why is that? Well, quite simply, because of two factors. One, you've got a toxin or toxins in the cell. Two, deficiency. In other words, the cell hasn't been given the nutrients or even perhaps the messengers which communicate to them, messengers being things like vitamins, to communicate to the nutrients to assist that cell so that it can function correctly. So, if that's true, I believe there are six main ways that it can lead to it. One way is through stinking thinking, create thoughts that serve you. So if you are m mainly in a negative state of mind, and you're worrying about your money, you're worrying about the family, you're fearing this, you've got a lot of shame about the other, that's going to add more nails into your coffin. How deeply you breathe will determine how long you live and also how you feel. I mean, think about it. When you breathe fully and deeply, all these areas expand from the front, the sides and the back. But how many of us may take a few moments just to practice deep breathing and find the tempo that's right for you taking air in and then letting air go. What you drink. Now think about it. 70% plus of your body is composed of water, but how many people will either drink sodas, which are all acidic and not what the body cells want, or perhaps drink a lot of drinks that contain a lot of caffeine, which is a diuretic. So my invite to you is to become more mindful and to provide your body with what it requires. So think about it this way, because your cells, you've got a, every second, about 10 million of your cells are being turned over, are being produced. So wouldn't you want those cells to be stronger and healthier? I know we age, but surely, and you'll remember this, because it leads on to my fourth one, if you are more alive than that which you're about to eat, you've got a smarter choice to make. Now I use metabolic typing, which is not a diet, it's a lifestyle. It covers many factors to do with blocking factors, enhancing factors, as well as the foods that are right for you. So, as Lucretius said, one man's food is another man's poison. And of course, Hippocrates said, let thy food be thy medicine, and thy medicine be thy food. Over 90% of what people consume in the US, and that figure is probably similar in the UK, 
It's denatured, dead and dysfunctional. And again, if your cells require all those nutrients, vitamins, minerals, um, enzymes, etc, etc, then you've got to put that fuel in. You've got to put those alive foods into the body. What time do you get to bed? Your circadian rhythms, your sleep patterns important. So, as a general guide, when the sun went down, within two, definitely three hours, lights out. Read the book by Wiley. And then generally as the sun came up, we would rise. Those are five factors. The fifth factor, the sixth factor, would be creative movement, or what you may get known as exercise. I don't use the word exercise because an X is a has been, a size, something that people become but don't want to. In other words, two thirds of people are either overweight or obese. Another label. I presume you didn't want to play with that. <laughs> Maybe you did. So understand that it's very empowering when you can take control of your health. It's very disempowering when you take a pill that at best may treat a symptom and allow you to continue living a lifestyle that doesn't serve you and probably doesn't serve those around you. So, one, a disease. Two ways to create it. Remind me, what are they? Toxicity, deficiency. And there are six pathways of how you can empower yourself and prevent and or reverse any dis-ease. How you think, breathe, drink, eat, sleep and undertake creative movement daily. There are some other factors but ultimately those are the six broad headings. So what I'd like or my invite on this recording is for you people to think about What could I eat right now, assuming that you're hungry, that will allow my body to turn over a healthier cell than before? What could you consume today which will put more health deposits in your bank account? Remember the power comes from the question, the questions. And by focusing on those things that will be of service to you and those around you, it'll also make you feel good. So my invite is for you to empower yourself and focusing on my fourth habit, eat the foods right for you, find what they are. Some things you may not like, well don't consume them. However, I do believe that a lot of us are kind of lost in understanding what are the right foods for us. So we might crave something because as we know the physical body doesn't lie to us. So if you're craving something, what really does your body want? If you crave for chocolate, your body doesn't want the class A drug sugar unless your parasites or pathogens are telling you to consume that, maybe you require more iron in your body. So where would you go to get that? Maybe your body requires more potassium or magnesium. So what kind of fruits and vegetables and or meats could you consume that contain that? There's quite a bit of information. And my wife's home. Hey, humbun. Create yourself a great day, my love to you all. Bye for now.